So there we have a guide on our site uh, where you can download this, you don't have to memorize this. So uh, what's an egg, what's not an egg? If there's an egg on the milkweed, it's a monarch egg, but the milkweed also has this um, sap. So hence the name milkweed, it has this milky latexy sap. Now if the leaf is damaged, all of the milkweeds have this except for butterfly milkweed, uh, and they have it, I swear it's a greater or lesser degrees. Sometimes, I think often early in the season with younger plants, you're not really seeing that milkweed sap. Um, but anyway, there's typically sap. And so it can form, and you see this a lot on common milkweed, but they can all get it, these little bubbles of sap. Um, they're shaped more like droplets because they are. The eggs are pointy, or some people will say like if you cut a football in half, like football shaped, conical. Um, they have these like stripes on them if you get up close. If you have a little magnifying glass, even like a cheap one from like some sort of kid's science kit, uh, that's that helps. You can magnify things on your phone. Um, it's really the first eggs of the year that you get confused about. Um, it, it's not it, halfway through the season, you're going to know that's an egg. That's not an egg. The beginning of the season, when you haven't seen an egg in a while, like I, I get confused. Everyone does. And you're not seeing as many eggs because there's not as many monarchs. Um, you, you will find yourself maybe spending more time mulling it over. Um, eggs are often shinier. Uh, then the sap bubbles. The sap bubbles can look kind of dull. Um, the uh, um, so the other thing that somebody is saying in the chat, um, please, uh, and Karen and I have showed this in the survey. Uh, please submit a survey every week, even if you don't see any eggs. One of the early questions of the survey is, did you see eggs? Did you see caterpillars? If you say no to both, then you're done. You have submitted the data. It's very quick. Um, those no's, those zeros are really important to us because uh, we might we might be looking for, um, we might be able to tease out something about the patches where we're seeing a lot of no's or we're not seeing monarchs until later in the season, that there's something that's um, not as, I don't want to say good, but not, not as attractive to monarchs about those patches. Um, Isa's been mentioning there's like a new paper that showed the female monarchs will lay more eggs on milkweed planted around a periphera than in a clump in the center. Um, and that's just, you know, science is about repetition. That's just one study. Maybe that's something that we'll come to learn, or maybe we'll learn that there's a preference for certain species at certain times of year. That could really be true. Um, so again, these photos are on our site. Then, so you say you, you see eggs, um, then you start to get caterpillars. And so it's, when you're checking every week, um, it can be great. I mean, some folks, you, we could tell we're definitely checking more than uh, once a week, and like just submitting data once a week, because it can, it can get really like fun. It's like, what's, what's my monarch surprise today? Um, the first instar, and each of these instars or stages depending, it's like temperature dependent, like roughly three to four days. So you could have, you could see a monarch sort of skip a stage if you're only checking every week, which is fine. That's accounted for in the data and in the protocol. Um, so don't be surprised if like you see a first instar and then if you check back a week later, it's, it's a third instar. That, that would be expected. Um, the first instar or stage is the maybe hardest to find. In fact, there was one in that photo before um, of the eggs that most of us probably didn't see. Um, the they don't have that that monarch stripiness. Um, they're kind of pale green. They blend more with the leaves. They're really small, so like fingernail width. Um, they are the thing that we're going to tell you that is the classic way to tell the stage is the what look like antenna but they're really tentacles on the front of the head and on the back of the caterpillar uh if they don't really have those yet they just sort of have bumps where they'll be 
if it's a first instar, you're you're gonna know it's a first instar. It's hard to confuse it for something else. Um, I should say, if you like go out to check your milkweed one day and there's a second or third instar caterpillar and you haven't recorded any eggs or first instars, that's okay. You inevitably people are gonna miss eggs and they're gonna miss caterpillars, especially the younger ones. Please, you know, do a good job looking, search really hard, but also know that that, that happens to everyone. Um, there, Erica, I'm sorry, there was a question in the chat you might not have oh. seen. They want to know which is the front and which is the back. Ah. Find that out again. Yeah, I don't think they said. Okay. Oh no, this is the problem. Okay, so uh, this was funny because we had a designer make um, the the guides that you're going to download and in a bunch of them the caterpillars were backwards um so what we're going to talk about is these tentacles um and they're longer on the head uh, and generally the, the rule of thumb is the head tentacles of say a second instar then on the third instar that's how long the back tentacles are going to be and the head tentacles are going to be longer and then they're going to switch and those head tentacles will then be the back tentacles and the head tentacles in terms of length. So for the first instar, the head has these bigger bumps because those are going to be bigger tentacles. Um, and then here in this, here's the second instar, here's the head. So it says front, fronts resemble um, nodes or small tentacles and the backs are small bumps. The second instar is pretty distinctive from the first in that it has the stripiness. It can be confused for the third because the size, while the size is significant for the um, first instar because they're tiny, the second instars not only grow a lot, but just because environmentally they can range a lot in size. So starting at the second instar, size isn't so good an indicator of what you're looking at. It's really how big these tentacles are will help you distinguish them. Um, now remember, you're going to be kind of, these are your plants. You're going to be checking them kind of regularly. You're not probably going to be handed a caterpillar and asked to tell what stage it is. Also, we are happy to look at photos and help you figure it out. Um, but generally for second star, those tentacles, they're, they're pretty small. Um, they're just sort of coming out because remember, it didn't have them the stage before. And the back one, it really doesn't have uh, back tentacles. They're still just little bumps. By the third instar, those tentacles extend almost to the front of the head. And the back ones are now the size they were in that second. Ah, every time I try to move my mouse, I advance the slide. All right, the back ones are now actually distinctively there. Um, They've darkened in the banding, although that's hard to tell unless you're kind of looking at them next to each other. The fourth instar, I mean, this is a properly big caterpillar. You've, you've probably certainly noticed that you have a caterpillar by now. Your milkweed is disappearing. It has holes in it. They tend to, in these first three stages, like chew holes. And by fourth and fifth, they're like sawing off leaves. Uh, they're more like eating the entire width of leaves. Um, so now these tentacles extend past the face on the front. And on the back, they're now extending almost to the back of the caterpillar because they're now mirroring that third instar. Um, somebody has said, like, how long from hatch to the pupae? And it's about two weeks. Um, and... So that is why we need you to check every week because you could totally miss uh, if you skip for two weeks. You could totally miss a caterpillar, um, and that is frankly why this is. I don't know if I've said this. Why this really can only be done as a community science project because if I'm monitoring and we've done this where we had permission from folks to go monitor at certain places, I'm limited by the number of places I can literally drive to and be in a week. Um, and so by having folks have zero commute time, because it's their uh, we can just get more data than we ever could. We tried doing this with like paid um, intern staff and we could just really only handle like maybe 12 sites um, because she had to, it was basically a driving internship. Um, okay, so that was a digression. But, so then the fifth instar, 
this is pretty distinctive. The, the tentacles typically get a curl to them. They're, they're incredibly long. They're, they've doubled from that fourth instar, and that fifth instar now has those really long back tentacles extending um, past the back of the caterpillar that it had in fourth instar. Um, again, they do become more vivid, uh, but that can be hard to tell if you don't have them next to each other. Um, in most cases, like this is a very large caterpillar now, um, and your milkweed plant is being largely consumed. 